Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Dig Coding here and this is the third video in the Integrating APIs in the Django 3.2 playlist on YouTube. So before I jump into the video, I'd like to draw your attention to the description as there's a link to our Patreon page in there. We are currently looking for some support to help us create this content quicker and of a higher quality. So if you feel like you've got deep pockets and you're a little bit generous, then make a pledge, it'll be massively welcomed. And also, if this is your first visit to this channel, then don't forget to subscribe and like and share the content as that helps us massively. So that's got that out of the way. To add some context to the playlist itself, we are trying to integrate as many APIs into Django projects as possible. We build the project out, we upload it to, um, or push it to GitHub, and then we um, allow anyone to clone the repositories and build it into your own projects, essentially. So um, the link to the repository in GitHub is in the description below. Have a look at that. But in the meantime, let's jump into the project. So look at my screen. It's open up straight away on GitHub. This is the repository. There's, uh, there's not much going on, but there is a readme file. All you need to do is create a directory on your local machine, clone the repository, make a virtual environment, fire that up with your um, API key in the settings, and that's all you need to do, and it will work, okay? I've also got a link to NASA's API website, which is api.nasa.gov, that is in the description below as also. You need to generate a key on this website, so you need your first name, your last name, your email, and the application URL to generate a key. Nice and easy. When you sign up, you'll get the key on the website, but you'll also get an email sent to your inbox. That will have your key in it, get it in your settings. Bob's your uncle. All right, so that's all you've got to do to make this project work. So if I open up, uh, I already have got a screen incognito. So this is the project. It looks very, very similar to everything else I put on GitHub. Um, it's good to have some familiarity when you're opening these up, right? So we've got a couple of URLs, we've got a home and we've got a results page and we've just got this little form here. So we're only making three API calls. There is so many more on NASA. I'll go through them in a few minutes, but we're using the APOD, so the astronomy picture of the day. We're using the Mars Rover Photos API, and we're also looking at the Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera. So that's a camera that is on a satellite somewhere in space, and it's taking images of the Earth uh, periodically. So we're tapping into that API and we're, we're trying to, or we're going to get the image from a certain date time. Okay, so let's click on any one of those. So if we look on astronomy picture of the day, click that, click submit, it'll redirect you to the results URL and it will show you the image. Okay, so this is a basic application. It's only doing minor things with the API. There's a lot of complex calls you can make with NASA, but this is the very, very basics. So yeah, this is a little image that we're just displaying in the um, in their template here. So this is the APOD API. So if I now click on home, go into the Mars Rover photo, this will pick, I think this is just the first image um, from the from the API call. And there you go. It's the, it's the image taken from the front of the rover itself, which is um, fantastic. And lastly, we've got home, and we'll click on the Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera, EPIC. I love that acronym. And this is the image taken, I think this is on the, uh, today's the 10th of May, but this was taken on the 8th of May. Okay, so fantastic, right? Um, that's all that this app is doing, but if, I will draw your attention here to the URL. So the way it works is it is submitting a form, um, but it's, it's creating a parameter that's appending to the URL and it's being called, so it's results question mark. So the um, keyword is cat equals epic. So I'm just using three keywords, epic, Mars and APOD. And depending on which one of those is being passed through to the params on the URL, it, uh, it will make three different API calls. So. Let's open up the project itself and I will go about dissecting down what we've done here. Okay, this is the project on my local machine. Uh, we've got uh, the Django NASA API directory here. We've got a main directory, which is the main app. That's where all the templates are and all the views and the URLs. And we've got a static directory because we're serving up logos, um, as, uh, JavaScript files and CSS files. So that's why we need a static directory and we've configured the settings.py file accordingly. So straight out the box, um, we've changed import OS. Um, we've added the main to installed apps, the main app that we've, um, we've got in the project. No other fancy pants stuff is going on. 
change the language code to GB because I'm in the UK. And then at the bottom here, we've got static files DERS, which I've added because we're serving static files. And we've got static root. So you need those if you're um, serving the static direct, you're serving static files to the project. Uh, so I won't go into any more detail about that. Then you've got an API key, key variable here. Change that XXX to the key that you get from NASA and save. Then you've got URLs conf. All we're doing is we're bringing in settings from Django conf and we're bringing in static from Django conf URL set static. And then we're adding to the URL patterns and we've got this little setting here, if settings.debug, then we add to the URL patterns, the static um, URL and the static root. Okay. I Every time I go through one of these apps, I'm firing through these a lot quicker and quicker because it is just going over old ground. So that's all we've changed in the main file. Sorry, in, in the URL conf. And then we'll go through the main app. So admin, no changes, apps, no changes. Mix-ins, right, so this is, actually we'll come on to mix-ins in a second. No models, no tests, the URLs, just got home and report um, results, and we've got views. So in views, we're bringing in the mix-ins, we've got an index function, so we've got the default get request, which renders the index HTML file, but the post request, so if request.method equals post, we are getting the cat keyword from the post, and if there's a cat keyword, then we're returning a redirect params. The redirect params is in the mixins. So it essentially redirects to the results URL and it appends some parameters to the end. So that's what that's doing. Then we've got the results function. Again, this is a get request. So it's not request.post.get, it's request.get.get. So we're getting the cat from the um, parameter. And if there isn't a cat, so if you would just put result forward slash results, if there's no cat parameter, it will just redirect you straight back to home. So we don't want to be making an API call unnecessarily. So if there is a cat, however, we create a variable called results. Um, we then look at API mixing. So that's one of the mixings I'll talk about in a second. I've got a print function now. We don't really need that. And if results, so if the call is good, then the, we add results and cat to context. Then we render the results HTML. Nice and easy. Let's look at mixins.py. So, redirect params. I like this little function. I've got it in most of my projects. It uses URL encode and it just takes in some keywords um, and creates a parameter that can be appended to a URL. So that's what that's doing. Then we've got a class API mixin. So it's got an init method and then it's got a get data method. So the init method is just taken in cat. So it's creating self.cat. The get data method First and foremost, we have a, let me enlarge this screen a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So we've got a cat dictionary, so a category dictionary. So depending on what the keyword is, we've got Apod, Mars and Epic. Obviously I've put that in here for the for just tutorial purposes really. Um, you wouldn't necessarily do this. You might just write specific API calls for each of the ones that you're looking to um, make a call on. But I've got a dictionary. So if the keyword is APOD, then it um, has an F string and it creates an F string here. Mars, same again. Epic, same again. So I've looked at the docs. I've, lo what, I've looked at the HTTP request um, syntax and I've just created a, uh, a string there. Then I've got URL. So this is always the same. HTTPS forward slash api.nasa.gov slash and then we append the um, the string in the cat dictionary dependent on the keyword. So we then create a variable called R and we're using the library request. So we make a get request with the URL we've just created up here. And if we can get a status code of 200, so 200 means it's a good response, then we do something. So we've only got three different APIs we're doing in this tutorial. First is Mars, then it's Apod, then it's Epic. If we if the keyword is Mars, then we get the we're looking for the photos keyword and the image SRC to get the image URL and the text that's just pulled straight from Mars, uh, so the Mars, the, the NASA website. If it's the Apod API, then we're looking for the URL keyword and then the explanation keyword to get the image and text for this dictionary. And then lastly, we need to do something funky to create a, a image URL because uh, the epic um, HTTP requests or the endpoint is slightly different. So we're looking for the image keyword here. And then we just sonify 
um, the, um, the response, we look for the date keyword and then we split and split. So we're creating a new string that we can insert into this new URL. So this is another endpoint that we pull straight from um, NASA and we're looking for, we're adding in all of these different keywords into this string to create a new URL for the image. So that is then brought into this dictionary. So return image new URL and the text is straight of NASA. That's what we're returning to the view and that's what we're rendering to the HTML. So I hope this video has been interesting and I hope you've picked up a couple of things. Essentially, when you're working with an API, you need to get um, quite clever with some of the calls that you make because the endpoints aren't always the same. So you need to get a response, sometimes tweak it, make another call, get a response, and then, you know create a list, uh, a list comprehension, whatever you need to do. But you need to get cute and you need to get clever on what you're doing with the APIs. And I'm hoping that in this playlist, there'll be one or two videos that you really do get some benefits from. So this is the end of the video. Again, if just to remind you, if this is the first time to the channel, then please subscribe, please like, please share the content. Also, if you want to become a patron of Dig Coding, uh, then there's a link in the description below. All pledges are massively welcomed. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you.